Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fluently Forward. We are doing the Wednesday public mini episodes again. So I'm so excited just because sometimes there's a topic I want to talk about, but it doesn't deserve an hour of content, just like a good 20 minutes. So we're going to bring that back a little hump day fun. If you are watching over on YouTube, I'm wearing merch. And if you are listening on podcasts, hopefully you can hear the comfort of a well worn sweatshirt on me. If you go to fluentlyforward.com slash merch, we have merch now, which is incredible because I know that I've always said I didn't want to ever make merch because I just, I don't want to put more like junk into the world. I was like, for what? You know, an extra t-shirt with like fluently forward on it that no one needs. This is not that. We have partnered with this incredible studio. It's called And Or Studios run by Hannah, who is a floozy. And what she does is she goes around to all of these different vintage and thrift stores and she handpicks the softest, best quality items there within our Fluently Forward palette. And we've got three logos on it because I don't know, I I just always thought like, I don't want anyone walking around wearing a Fluently Forward t-shirt. Like you don't need to do free advertising for me, but we put some fun phrases on it. So some of the items have very much in love with quotes around it. A little homage to that very obvious PR publicist phrase that we love so much. We also have items with hello, hello on them, which I just kind of feel like is a little bit like fun to wear around, a little bit flirty. It could be a conversation starter. And then we have apparel with floozy on it, which I just think is hilarious. So if you want to check any of that out, fluentlyforward.com slash merch, you can scroll. We have items in like a warm earth pastel kind of 90s theme. And it's not just like hoodies and sweatshirts. We also have jackets, we have button downs, whatever. So go check it out. And even if you're international, I worked with Hannah to make sure that there is a flat $8.99 shipping rate no matter where you are in the world so anybody can get this. And without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So I am excited to do a little mini deep dive into Usher because after he did the halftime show at the Super Bowl, I was like, everybody's got to have questions about this guy. I mean, obviously he was big in the 90s and the early 2000s. And I know he has a residency in Vegas, but like, let's be honest. He wasn't really the name on our lips for the past couple of years, uh, even though he was huge back in the day. So we're going to dive into him and kind of go over the blind items and lore on this man. They are not great, if I'm being honest. I remember listening to the Beyond the Blinds Patreon episode all about Usher and his blind items maybe like two years ago. And the main lore of his blind items, I'll just give you like a TLDR up top. They're like, Usher is gay. I don't think so. I I think everyone's bi. You know me. And then they also say there's kind of this like cycle where Diddy abused Usher at a very young age and then Usher abused Justin Bieber at a very young age. And we're going to kind of get into that and this weird like mentor mentee relationship that existed in this industry where like literally 14 year olds would be living in a house of full grown men who were engaging in very adult activities at home. And then I also found out more interesting stuff about Usher. Like I didn't know that him and Scooter Braun co-founded the record label Raymond Braun Media Group. So that was a joint venture. And then that was the label that signed Justin Bieber. Like I knew that Usher had mentored Justin Bieber and then he signed with Scooter Braun, but I didn't know that their record label was a joint venture between Scooter Braun and Usher back in the day. So a little bit about Usher taking it from the top. He was born in 1978 in Dallas, Texas. Then he spent the majority of his young childhood life over in Tennessee. His father left the family when Usher was just a year old. So he basically grew up with his mother, his stepfather back then, and his half-brother. And his mom actually encouraged him to join the local church youth choir when he was just nine years old. And it was his grandma that discovered his ability to sing and really wanted him to kind of encourage that. So the whole family knew that he had this dynamite voice, incredible pipes, and they actually moved to Atlanta, Georgia, because they thought that that would be a better place for aspiring singers. So that was where he went to high school. Now, he got started very early in a little bit of like the biz. When he was just 10 years old, he joined this R&B quintet called the New Beginnings, NU. And it was organized by this local music promoter named Daryl Wheeler. He recorded 10 songs with them, but his mom actually took him out of the group because according to her, she said it was just a bad experience. 
So then three years later at age 13, he met this guy named AJ Alexander at a local talent show in Atlanta. And he, this guy at the time was Bobby Brown's bodyguard. So he would take Usher around and he would have him perform in like parking lots and at talent shows just at age 13. Then there was a representative from a record company who saw him on a talent show. And this guy signed Usher on the spot. Now, it was at this time that Usher's mom actually stopped her job as a medical technician and decided to become his manager, which you see this a lot, right? Like, I know Selena Gomez, her mother was her manager for a long time. There's parts of me where I'm like, that is so dangerous. And then there's other parts of me where I'm like, I don't know, like who, who else would be looking out for you unconditionally other than your mother? But I think the problem here is that I think we did a Millie Bobby Brown episode. We did a Stranger Things episode and we talk about Millie Bobby Brown in it. I think the problem there is that most people's parents are unconditionally looking out for them. But if you're a star, sometimes you have a parent that may or may not really have your best interests at heart. So anyway, Usher is still young. He's like 14 at this point and he's preparing for his debut album and he lost his voice. He was going through puberty. It happens. I think we all remember when Justin Bieber's voice got like way lower. So the guy who signed him became really skeptical of Usher. He put his album on hold. Usher was pleading like, please keep me, please keep me. And this guy Reed didn't know what to do with Usher. So he sent him to New York in 1994 to live with Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, and attend what he called Flavor Camp, which was basically just getting exposed to the world of Hollywood, orgies, drugs, sex. He doesn't say that, but like they kind of say it when we'll get into later Howard Stern interviews. Usher has said that this period was the hardest days of his life. He said, quote, I had to knuckle up, figure shit out in New York. And he was 14 when this happened. Anyway, then with P. Diddy's help, he puts out his first album. And then from that, it's just off to the races. Banger album after a banger album. He was on the TV show The Voice. He was one of the co-owners of Tidal. Um, he started different record labels. He has his residency. And now he's just on the halftime show. So that's like a quick wrap up of the last 20 years. Personal life-wise, he in 2001 was dating uh, Chili Thomas. She was a member of TLC. And they had a relationship that lasted for three years. It's interesting because it was around this time in 2003, he started working on the album Confessions, which I feel like that must be his most popular album. That's what most people know him for. And all these songs were kind of inspired by the personal lives of Usher and his different collaborators. But there's a lot of songs in it about like infidelity, pregnant mistresses, et cetera, et cetera. And it made a lot of people think, oh, well, if this is his Confessions album, is he the one cheating and is he cheating on Chili Thomas? So anyway, they say that an unintended result of this album coming out was that she became very suspicious about Usher and then they broke up in December 2004, which is just kind of reminding me of like Taylor Swift with the folklore and Evermore. Like she puts out the song Betty and everybody's like, you're gay. And then she's like, no, no, no. These are fictional characters that I'm writing about, obviously. So I guess that idea has kind of been around since 2003. Anyway, in 2004, he dates supermodel Naomi Campbell for a few months. He then, in 2005, started dating his uh, stylist, Tamika Foster. So she was his stylist for a few years. He always looks good, too. He looked so good at the Super Bowl. I loved the first, like, white outfit, and I loved the sparkly outfit with abs in them. Like, that was awesome. Anyway, he ended up marrying Tamika Foster. Um, They, let's see, she had three sons from a previous marriage, but then they together had two sons. They then got divorced in 2009. And then in 2015, he quietly married his longtime girlfriend and manager, Grace Miguel. So now he kind of has a pattern of like shitting where he eats. No, wait, eating where he shits. Okay, I forget how the phrase goes, but like, you know what I'm talking about. He's, the people in his entourage are the people he ends up dating and marrying. The people in his entourage are the people he ends up dating and marrying twice now. So anyway, um, then let's see, we get into some drama in 2017 about him having herpes and different lawsuits around it, which we will be talking more about later. In 2018, him and Grace Miguel separate and now recently... Basically, this past week, he married his longtime girlfriend, who he's already had a child with, Jennifer um, Giocana, if that's how you say her last name. They got married. They had one of those like Vegas weddings this past week, but they've been together since I think like 2020 was when they had a child together. Now, other random funny personal news is that 
after the death of his father for a little bit, because his father died of a heart attack in 2008, Usher became vegan. And he was vegan for a few years. I was vegan for a few years. But the thing is, when he stopped his vegan diet, he said that the reason he stopped it was because the lifestyle was too expensive, which is just like incredibly hilarious to me. And I feel like that's one of the big misconceptions of being vegan is that it's so expensive. But when you think of all of the different diets, like every single, most people in the world are eating a vegan diet. Like every time we go down to Tanzania for the summer, we're basically eating mostly vegan because it's expensive to have animals. That idea of, you know, having like some sort of lentil bean protein mixed with some sort of like rice, flour, quinoa, carb. Like obviously if you're having acai bowls every single day, like that's going to get expensive if you're having all of the fake meat. But when you really think about a true like bare bones vegan diet, it's actually really, I just feel like it's such a misconception. At least when I was vegan, I saved money. Anyway, so I was vegan at around this time when he stopped being vegan. And I remember all the blogs were like, seriously, like he's doing such a bad thing for the cause by saying that it's expensive. Like you're Usher, goddammit. Anyway, let's get into some of the blinds and the different rumors about Usher that have existed. So I want to talk about Puffy Flavor Camp, which was him going to live with P. Diddy and all of his friends, basically the heyday of Bad Boy Records. He was 14 when he went to go live there. And it's funny because all of these different articles are like, ooh, teenage Usher was living with P. Diddy, teenage Usher. And it's like, I I know that 14 is a teen, the same way that 13 is technically a teen, but there's a big difference between like 14 and 19. And whenever I had heard that like teenage Usher was living, you know, this life back then, I just always assumed 17, 18, not 14. Anyway, so he went on the Howard uh, Stern show a while back and kind of talked about what this was like. He said it was pretty wild. It was crazy. He said that he was in a constant presence of Notorious B.I.G., Lil' Kim, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, et cetera, et cetera. He said, I was like the little brother. They called me Baby Boo. Howard Stern asked him if he was given any rules when he was living with P. Diddy, and Usher said he wasn't disciplinary. He was just letting me be a young man. He also had a per diem, apparently. Usher was given just enough money to not get into too much trouble. And then when it came time to put out Usher's first album, P. Diddy was the one who acted as the producer. Now, it is interesting because at the end of this interview, Howard Stern says, would you, now that you have kids, Usher, would you ever send them to Puffy Flavor Camp? And Usher said, hell no. So interesting now it's also interesting that he said he wouldn't do this for his kids but he kind of did it for justin bieber so usher and justin bieber met in 2008 when justin bieber was 13 years old you know scooter braun had like discovered him on youtube at that time is that true i don't know if it's true or not but whatever that's how the story goes so um scooter braun convinced justin bieber's mother to let her son fly to atlanta record demo tapes, et cetera, et cetera. And he met Usher at the studio during one of these recording sessions. So he grew up um, idolizing Usher. So Justin Bieber offered to sing for him on the spot, but Usher turned him down. But then when he watched Justin Bieber's singing videos, he was like, oh, wait a minute. He said, quote, his voice was magical and his personality was just so keen. He knew how to be. Anyway, you can't find much about how long Justin Bieber and Usher lived together, but different news articles say that they briefly did live together when Justin was really young. Even back in 2009, his first single, One Time, it was shot at Usher's home in LA. So I'm going to assume that it was like around that time in 2009. And basically the lore of the blind items goes that when these living together situations happened, P. Diddy abused or was inappropriate with Usher and Usher was the same with Justin Bieber. This is all alleged, but that's just kind of how it goes. We have some blind items here that say, um, these two singers used to be really close. The older one gave the younger one his big break. Now the two who are both A-listers don't speak to each other. The younger one went on some kind of drug fueled rant and called the marriage of the older singer a fake and then called him a gay slur. All of this was done in front of several mutual friends. There was another blind item in 2014 saying this A-list singer, Usher, did his best to avoid this former A-list tweener, Justin Bieber, at an event over the weekend, and he definitely didn't want to be photographed with the former tweener, no matter how hard the tweener tried. A falling out between the pair is an understatement. I know a lot of people were wondering, why did Usher and Justin Bieber not perform together at the Super Bowl? Personally, I think Justin Bieber is just over it. I just don't think he wants to, but it does seem like they were close. No, they're not. 
And then there's like really, really dark blind items. This one's called the hazing. They called it hazing. I think it has destroyed this A-list singer's life, Justin Bieber, and it will ultimately cause him to take his own life. Not enough is spoken about how his dad had the biggest voice in his ear, telling him to go with the mentors who would make him rich. All of those Bible lessons went out the window when the dad was given a bunch of coke and as many strippers as he could have sex with in a night. Limos and cash and parties and made to feel like a king. So he would tell his son to go spend time with the A-list mentor, Usher, and his friends all night at the recording studio. That was fine. Dad was out partying and enjoying the life and never wanted it to end, blah, blah, blah. His son was abused and molested all under the guise of hazing. The son did as he was told because his dad told him it was okay. Now the son is rich and made his deal with the devil. He will end up dead. He has way too many demons in his head. Blah, 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 blah. Um, it keeps going on. It's just a little bit meandering there. And then we had another blind from kind of recently. This was around the time that Justin Bieber was releasing the single Yummy. Remember how a lot of people were confused by that because it featured like he to promote the single Yummy. He was posting pictures of toddlers on Instagram and things like that. So this blind item says for years, this foreign born A-list singer has refused to discuss what happened when he was younger and under the tutelage of this one named singer, Usher. Apparently, he has started speaking to his friends about it. I think the world would love to know. And a lot of people at that time, I mean, some regular people thought this, some like QAnon people thought this. They believed that Justin Bieber was going to come out and talk about the child abuse and the abuse of minors that happens in the industry, which we know to be a fact. And they thought maybe he was going to use his song Yummy to do it. It never ended up happening, but a lot of people were kind of thinking that at the time. There are blinds upon blinds of Usher enjoying the company and the affection of the same sex. There was even a blind item about him and Zac Efron allegedly spending the same night in a hotel suite together back in the day. Um, there was a blind item. This one sounds a little qanon It was basically saying that there are people like Usher and P. Diddy and Drake who like to find young talent and like mentor and develop them, but obviously it's really insidious. I don't know how much I believe that. I hope it's not true, but you can go check that blind item out if you want to. Tons of blind items saying that every single person Usher has been with is a beard and he's gay. You know what I think. I just think that everyone's bi. And I also feel like once you have children with someone, I don't feel right talking about like bearding blind items once kids are involved. But there are a ton of blind items about Usher cheating on his partners, which of course I believe. So now we're going to get into the herpes case. There are some blind items about this and then also some legitimate news articles. So basically, back in 2017, Usher was accused by multiple different women. And I will say there was one man and then the, the other, I think, let's see, there was a woman and then there was a Jane Doe and a John Doe. So two women, one man. And they all accused Usher and they were suing him million dollar lawsuits, basically saying that they got um, herpes from him. He didn't disclose it. They had sex. He didn't tell them about the STD. And then also Usher's insurance company got involved, which I thought was really interesting because Usher was trying to get his insurance company to cover the damages that he was ordered to pay. And then the insurance company said that we don't cover, of course, they don't cover anything <laughs> anyway, but they said, we don't cover STD related legal actions. And his insurance company was also a little bit upset with Usher because back in 2012, he paid a settlement to a woman. This is not in 2017. This is a different woman, a fourth accuser who accused him of allegedly infecting her with herpes. And he had paid her off a settlement and he didn't tell his insurance company that he did that. So then the insurance company sued Usher. So it was a whole shit show. It was like a two year long, different legal battles, $20 million case. It was quickly settled and the terms of the deal were kept confidential. I feel like you kind of, I feel like you kind of know what happened with that, right? You kind of know. Now, this was an interesting blind item from 2009 that I just want to bring up because even though I know Usher literally got married this week, I wish he hadn't and I wish that this blind item was true. So back in 2009, it said, which scorned reality star, Kimberly Kardashian, is in talks with a major R&B singer to have a faux relationship just to improve her image? And I have to say, like, Kim Kardashian dating Usher, that would be incredible. She should have done that. And I, I know, I know, like, whatever, he literally just 
married somebody, but I think that it would be great. Although she was seen at the Super Bowl with Odell Beckham Jr. I know a lot of people thought that that was just rumors. I thought it was just a rumor. It seems like they might actually be dating. Okay, and then the last blind item here was like way back in the day, it was saying that Julianne Huff for Dancing with the Stars um, was threatening to quit and the producers were like, fine, we were going to replace you with Usher anyway. So then she backed down and decided not to quit. And they were just saying they don't have the budget for Usher. They only have the budget to have Usher on for one episode, not an entire season. However, I know Usher is such a good singer. He was on The Voice. Him on Dancing with the Stars would be incredible. How good was his footwork at the Super Bowl? It was like amazing. When I rewatched it, I just watched his feet and then I rewatched it and I watched his whole body and then I rewatched it and I watched the beads of sweat on his face. It's like each time you watch, you can like pay attention to something different, but he's really just a phenomenal dancer. So anyway, that is the alleged rumor. Just a little intro of everything about Usher. You can head to the internet and dive more into any of these instances if you want, but it honestly, it kind of sounds like a little bit of a tragic situation if what ha- what is alleged happened between him and Justin Bieber, that's obviously unforgivable. But I feel like the whole shit about him living with Diddy, especially now that we have the Cassie lawsuit against Diddy and we know more about him, I don't know. It just puts such a bad taste in my mouth. And I also just think like I feel, I just feel really bad too that these people, I know Justin Bieber, his mom was involved closely in his work growing up. It sounds like it was the same for Usher. And it just makes me feel really icky, too, that, I don't know, any parent would let their child under the age of 18 be in these dangerous situations and, like, get famous. So anyway, go check out the Beyond the Blinds Patreon episode on Usher if you want all of the nasty, gritty stuff. And you can head on over to the Fluently Forward Patreon if you want to check out any of our episodes. We did a cool one last week all about uncontacted tribes. All of these people, most of them live kind of near the equator, but there's people everywhere who live completely uncontacted, or no, 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 isolated from modern society. And that was a very cool deep dive. So anyway, thank you for hanging out with me for this mini episode, and I will see you on Monday for a full episode of Fluently Forward. Bye, guys.